Well, 2 Corinthians, we're going to do chapter 1, verses 1 through 16. You know, thinking about music like that, I say, I say this, and I can say it with all confidence, I am a professional musician. Does that make me a better musician? I mean, come on. One's a C, one's a D. Only one can be right. You notice your mistakes quicker. <laughs> I'm a professional musician, but does that make me a better musician? It does? Is there truth to that? If you watch the, um, maybe the story of, uh, who's the boxer? He was a truck driver, a black guy. Can't think of his name. Who's the famous boxer? Mid-40s. He probably, well, there's a movie about him. He just got in a fight and got discovered. Why don't I know why I'm a professional musician? You might get discovered. I applied for the job. Didn't make... Well, that's true, too. But I did apply. Was there somebody better than me? Yeah. Why didn't they get the job? He didn't fill out the application. Yeah. It didn't necessarily make me better than someone else. It just means I made out the application. Um, and I guess what we want to do, I thought I'd use that to apply it to this. If you want to be a comforter, but you've never been a comforter, it, the only way to be a comforter is to start doing what? Pass on blankets. No. <laughs> start comforting. And people don't comfort because they're either afraid to comfort, they don't think they're qualified to comfort, they, there could be various, they don't, they don't want to get hurt. Whatever their motives or reasons are, they didn't apply for the job. They didn't, just because somebody didn't apply for the job didn't mean that they weren't the best dancer in the group or the best spot, or the best of whatever it was. You, you got to apply for the job. You got to apply yourself and apply for the job. Pastor Thompson used to joke about that second song we sang. He keeps me singing, da, 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 da. Well, he was in the class, but Doc, Doc was running the institute, Dr. Strachan, and he said, and I played that, we were in the institute, I played that, we were really going at it. And I didn't have, I didn't have a, a, a brother Welsh to slow me down. So we were really, really going. And then Pastor Thompson would say, man, that really got the Dr. Strachan really going because it was really upbeat and he was leading the same. <laughs> anyway, you've got to apply for the job. Was I scared when I auditioned? Yeah. Every blood vessel, even my eyeballs, were pumping blood. You could feel. You could feel. Even my eyeballs were pumping blood. And I auditioned. I auditioned at uh, uh, the 252. Uh, 250, 252, Columbia? Yeah. Columbia Road, there was a uh, ground round out there. There was one on Columbia Road. In, uh, out that what 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 is that up there up north? North Olmsted. I think it's North Olmsted, but I got the job at 130th is where I uh, ended up playing. I don't think I auditioned at 130th. I think I auditioned at 252. They were building or converting the the uh, Parma store. All right, uh, the Church of God is how I have this title. The Church of God. Uh, is in verse 1 
And we are going to use all T words here tonight. And so what we want to do is, um, I preached on it this morning and I, I, uh, I, I prepped this sermon, I prepped this sermon before I do my other sermon, my morning sermon. And I thought, after I prepped this, I thought I'll make a continuation of this sermon by preaching on comfort this morning. So the, the follow-up to this sermon was what was preached this morning, but this is really the follow-up, but I prepped this one first. I, I think everybody wants peace in their life. Who wants commotion? You know, we were trained, we were trained when we were uh, doing, uh, and we had classes uh, with, uh, with uh, fostering. We were trained this way. Kids, these kind of kids don't feel comfortable unless what's going on. Unless there's commotion and chaos. They feel very uncomfortable. Now, is that true? I assume, uh, you would assume the teachers know more than you do. I mean, they, they are teaching it. I, I would say we learned little to nothing there, but that's one thing that stuck with me, is these kids... Uh, so for them to feel comfortable, what do they have to do? They're, they're very uncomfortable if they're in a calm situation. So what do they do? They create chaos. Yeah, and, uh, they, they, they have to create chaos, break a window, dump something, start screaming, a anything to cause chaos, you know. But, but for the normal... Uh, for, for normality in a pe people's lives, they want as little of that as, as they can have. Now, if my grandkids are going crazy, I'm okay with that up to a certain point, uh, you know, if they're having fun and, and so on, but I don't want them getting hurt. And uh, <clears throat> I, I really don't let them run around the house, you know, actually run around the house. But then the kids were over the, they were over the last week. And I said, well, go ask your father. Did you ask your father? If we played football in the living room. And what did he say? We would clear the living room out and we would play football. Mm -hmm. We did do that. What, did, what kind of ball tag did we play, did I tell you? We would take a sock and make it into a ball. And then we would play ball tag with a sock throughout, not the upstairs, just the downstairs, throughout the house. What was another one? Oh, we had, what did we have in, in the uh, living room? Ping pong table. We had a ping pong table, was our living room furniture. I remember that day. In what figure? You can roller skate in our house in a figure eight. And the kids would go around the house roller skating in a figure eight. What was going, what was happening the day after you roller skated in a figure eight throughout the house? I remember who was over. Monica was over. What? <laughs> okay, you're really close. What was going to happen the following day? Anybody know? We were going to have something installed. Carpet was going in. The car old carpet came out. There were wooden floors, and, and I decided, go ahead and roller skate. So they were roller skating in figure eight from the, uh, from the rooms, back you know, where you, you crisscross, and they were just having a good old time because the next day the carpet was coming. And so that was their first and last try at that. So roller skating only was for a day. A limited opportunity. A limited opportunity, yeah. Well, anyway... Let us begin here in verses 1 through 3. The church of God, what we want to have in the church. And you want to have this in your home. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Father, bless our message tonight that it would be uh, fruitful in our lives. That uh, it would really bring forth the, the fruit that each and every one of us need to experience now. By the will of God, and Timothy our brother, in the name of our Lord, unto the church of God, 
which is at Corinth with all the saints, which are in all Achaia. Now, this is his typical introduction, verses 1 through 3. Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Especially that verse 2. Grace be to you in peace. And so our, our first point here is if, if you're going to have this comfort in your life, because comfort appears ten times. I did not outline the word comfort and consolation and all that and make ten points. We have ten points, and none of them are really dealing with those actual words to make some kind of an outline. But if you have peace in your life, there's our first point is the tranquility. Somebody's got to have tranquility in their life, and Paul is wishing this on them praying this on them and desiring this be for the people that he is writing to. Was Paul hard on the Corinthians? Yes, he was hard on the Corinthians. His first letter was a letter of condemnation and his second letter is now a letter of, we'll say, condemnation, uh, co commendation. What did I say? Con not condemnation. I think the opposite of that. Did I, say, I said it wrong. So he condemned what they did in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And then he's trying to comfort them in 1 Corinthians, chap, 1 Corinthians to welcome back the uh, offender into the congregation. We're not dealing with the offender. and the, We're not dealing with the condemnation and the commendation. But the, the first thing you want to have in your, your house is tranquility. Boy, and I, I spelled it with two L's. Does tranquility spell with two L's? Man, I can't even spell. Yeah, so if anybody ever reads this, you're just going to have to wink at it, all right? Blink. So tranquility in your life. Now, let, now listen. Uh, babies cry. And it, it, it's, uh, now, who sang that song? What's his name? Perry Como. It's impossible. That's Perry Como. Ask a baby. Isn't that Perry Como? That's Perry Como. Ask a baby not to cry. And some people can't take that. That, that never once ever bothered me, having a baby cry or scream. If, it, if it's unnecessary, it might bother me. But if it's something that the baby needs to do, that, that doesn't bother me. So I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about more adults and children that are old enough to know better. Babies don't know. Babies don't know up and down. They don't know better. But children, young adults, and mothers and fathers know that we need to have peace and tranquility in our life. But people have problems. And people have turmoil in their life. <laughs> Uh, things arise in people's lives that bring that about. In verse 4, verses 4 through 7, I, my next T word is the training. Maybe a better word would be the test. And that is, who comforteth us, the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. And I said this morning, well, how can these people be, have been comforted in God if, if these books have any, the New Testament hasn't even been written? Where did they get their training? You know, the, uh, the, uh, I, that is my, uh, my point is the training. It could be the test is actually a practice thing. And I said, well, take the, uh, uh, not the golden rule. Uh, wait, what is the golden rule? Love your enemies. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, that kind of ties in with the first two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is, is like unto the first. So love thy neighbor as thyself. And we agree, both of those they're found in the New Testament, but both of those are found in the Old Testament. Jesus is just quoting the Old Testament. Were there people saved in the Old Testament? There, there had to be. They were trusting in the blood of the Lamb. They weren't trusting in the blood of Christ. We know that. It, that blood of those animals only temporarily covered them, 
and they went to that holding chamber until the blood of Jesus actually then did actually did forgive them and 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 he takes captivity captive but they still lived the, the right kind of life the the training or the test is uh, is you have been comforted and we are now to comfort others as we go along our way and uh, so the training or the test that is in our life for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ, verse 5. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering, which we also suffer, whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. As, as we learn as we go on how to be comforted, we comfort other people. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. So the test in our life, or the training that goes on, is we are to comfort people as we go along the way. Uh, folks, there's all kinds of opportunity in which to do that which to do that. And, uh, and we need to take advantage of that. Uh, encouraging people, comforting people as they, as, as they suffer. Um, uh, people, name off some things how people are suffering. Now Rocco's wife is suffering physically. You know, we plan to go over there and, and visit. And so, uh, who did the, I said this morning, who did the comforting? David or Bathsheba? Oh, I know you're so tired. David. David did. So, the weaker vessel needs more comforting than the uh, stronger vessel. That doesn't mean the husband doesn't need comforting too. But if you're physically uh, injured, uh, people need comforting. It could be spiritual suffering. And people need to be comforted. And we've been trained along the way to be able to do that. And Jesus gives us these lessons by putting us through this suffering so that we, we are comforted by him so we are able to comfort other people too. Verse 8, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. Now what was the trouble? That's our third point. Our third point is the trouble. Name off some of Paul's troubles. What were they? I guess I'm trying to get you to wake up too. Huh? A thorn in the flesh. We assume it was his eyes. But we're, we're not positive of that. But a thorn in the flesh, yeah, that's one of them. Give me another. He got whipped. He got uh, uh, 40 stripes, saved one. And he says how many times he got that. He got whipped. What were others? Imprisonment. That's three. He was beaten with what? Rods. Did I hear the word rods? He was beaten with rods, imprisonment. All right, if he was on the open sea, what happened there? He was, he was shipwrecked. I think one shipwreck, man, it would be enough for me. <laughs> you know, how's the cartoon go? They go under. How many fingers go up? One. No, it starts with one, right? Then down he goes. He comes back up. Two, down he goes. I don't think I can make it to three, brother. <laughs> I don't think I can make it to three. And then that, blah, 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 that's it. It's over. Right? So he was beaten. He was whipped. He had a thorn in the flesh. He, uh, spiritually, how was he uh, threatened and uh, injured and hurt? Who was after him? Oh, his own brethren. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, his was, own countrymen were after him. He was a Pharisee. And he... Yeah, his own brethren. That's how he got arrested. Yeah, his own brethren were after him. Another one would be, spiritually speaking, the devil. He's after him. The devil's after him. His own brethren's after him. So he, he's got his fair share of problems. 
So who, who better to teach this than the author, than Paul himself, about this? The, the trouble, and they despaired even of life. All right, uh, what would he be missing? Uh, was he short on money? Sometimes. Sometimes he was. Who supplied it? Other people. Yeah, who were those people? I think it does mention the church. Anybody remember? Pardon? Uh, I think it's the Philippians. I, I think the church of Philippi. I, I could be wrong. I might be wrong. But I think it was the Philippians. He writes it in there that uh, they had supplied his need. So, uh, but people have trouble. And sometimes the comforting that somebody may need is a phone call just to, uh, to rest their hand, hand on their shoulder and be an encouragement, uh, you know, just like that, just, just to be an encouragement. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. You can call me any time. If my phone rings, who's generally on the other end of the line at my house? On the other end of the line, she has a name and it begins with N. Who calls my house all the time? Anybody know who calls me? All the time, man. Huh? No, no, come on. And you girls take the call all the time. Who calls? Her name starts with N. So we'll say it out loud, Mrs. Tucker. Nancy called. Hello, this is Nancy. It's a recording. I don't know how many times that woman calls me every day. <laughs> All right, and, you know, I, I, I don't know what I say. It, it's one of those recordings, you know. We're not talking about that kind of a call. You know, where somebody just needs somebody to talk to. There's a lot of people that just would like to talk to somebody. Nancy is not one of them. What is Nancy trying to sell us? I don't even know what she, I don't even know if we listen to the whole call to know what Nancy's trying to sell us. But she's been trying to sell us something for months. Nancy calls our house constantly. Does anybody ever get a call from Nancy? Nobody here? We're we the only Rachel. ones. Huh? We get Rachel. Oh, Rachel calls you. <laughs> Rachel is calling Farah. All right, the trouble. But we had verse 9 and 10. But we had the sense of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves. What's our next T word? Is the trust. So we are not to trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. So when we're at life's end, and the end of our rope. What are we to do? You want the ultimate comfort in your life? Trust in God. He saw you through in the past with trouble. He saw you in the trouble before that and the trouble before that. When trouble comes again, trust in God that he is going to get you through this trouble. Whatever that trouble may be. The trust. So we have to trust in the providence of God. You know, why did these things have fallen out unto me? Why have they fallen out? Why couldn't this have happened to somebody else? Why did I do this? What? Why did this happen? And it's probably because of the providence of God. You know, why did it happen to Job? Right? Job didn't do anything wrong. Did he lose everything? He lost every nickel he ever had. He lost his kids. He got told off by his wife. And he's scraping himself with a pot shirt or whatever on a dung pile. That doesn't sound like fun. But he was still trusting in God. Amen? The trust. Verse 11, yet also helping, what's our next T word? Well, it just outlines itself, doesn't it? You don't even have to try. 
It is the togetherness, the together. Folks, we are together in this. We are together in this. Ye also helping together by prayer for us. So we help one another together by prayer. This is a, this is a joint effort of helping one another. Uh, the other day, uh, Corey, had, Corey had come over. She brought this book in. And it was well done. What was the name of that book? This little children's book. Like, oh, Baking with Grandma. Uh, Baking and Grandma's. It's, it's real nice colors. Uh, 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 grandma was told that uh, Esther would like you to read this to her. Uh, Ella, Ella needs this to be read to her. It's, it's really well done. It's really well done. There's an author who wrote the book. There's one who illustrated the book. But there's somebody who has endorsed the book. She performs at that... Uh, I want to say, what's not Minnesota, what's south of that? What state? Uh, Missouri. Oh, yes. Yeah. Branson. Who's performing at, not Lawrencewell, performing at Branson? It's a woman. Country, Western. It's good old Dolly. She's on there. Now, I don't know what part she has in that. Do you know about those books? Yeah, we get the same books. You get the same books. Where have I been at? Yeah, but, but I think the question that us, us uh, 1950 years are asking, why is Dolly doing this? It hasn't been that long. Yes, go ahead. Maybe two Sundays ago on the Plain Viewer there was an article. I didn't read it though, I just glanced at it, but it was I think it was talking about it. Was You're before. kidding. I am not. So what is half I, I, I use this as an illustration about the old nature and the new nature. Half of his music was gospel. That's what I heard. Whose? Elvis. Elvis. Half of his music was gospel. Well, we it proves the split personality. Half in the flesh and half in the spirit. The old man and the new man. Now is that true? I don't know. It makes for a good illustration. So after all these years, you wouldn't think she got her uh, She got her start with uh, what's, they all get their start. Porter Wagner. Porter Wagner. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of the other guy. But it's Porter Wagner. Yeah, you're right. It's Porter Wagner. And after all these years, she says, well, I may as well do something with my life. And so she's done that. I think, well, maybe she's getting right or doing something. I'm not saying she's safe. I'm not saying she's... I have no idea about her, her, uh, her, her spiritual condition. But, folks, this is a joint effort together. She's got together with this author, with this illustrator. And, we, and I say this because of... of not, I, I don't know what kind of a past she has, whether it's good or bad or shady. But these are entertainers, man. These are entertainers. Now, and, and that's, in the end, doing a good, I, I, I'd say that's doing a good thing. The, the book, so you signed up for those books, too. And you signed up for those books. Really, where have I been at? I guess my kids are older. It hasn't been out that long. Hasn't been out that long. I, I heard about the raising was older than five. I really did it until five. Okay. So it's not been all that long. All right, because, I mean, she, she's getting up there. Oh, I know. All right, there's tons of different authors. All right. It's kind of like I said, why am I the professional musician? I applied. Jump in and get your feet wet. If you're going to be a comforter, it's togetherness. You've got to jump in and get your feet wet. But I'm not very good at it. Well, you'll get better. 
you'll get better at it. I would sit, I got, I walked into a Baptist church. I'm not kidding you. This is the first time I walked in, into a Baptist church. First time, uh, other than the one in um, Northfield. I walked in there. You belong to a church that preaches love, the kind of a church that just can't seem to hang on to its young people. The kind of church uh, where the older folk keep on to come because they know it's the right thing to do. Man, that guy had my attention. And I listened from then on out the rest of that sermon. And while I was sitting there, I was listening to all that. I was sitting in the back. And I said to myself, I could do that. I could do that. And I made up my mind day one that one day I'm going to do that. It was 10 years later or so, but I made up my mind I'm going to do that one day. This is a together thing. Helping together by prayer for us. The way to get your feet wet is to jump in the pool. Jump in the pool, the together. What is a form of prayer? Hebrews 13. What's one of the four forms of prayer? T word. You are right, giving a thanks. Read the rest of the verse. I think it's the rest of the verse. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks, may be given by many on our behalf. As the prayers are answered, you give thanks, you give thanks that even ahead of time and in, in, in advance. The thanks. Want to be a, a comforter? Uh, it's a together thing. You do it with prayer and the giving of thanks. Be a comforter that you're trusting in God to get you through the trouble. Being a comforter. The giving of thanks. The giving of thanks. Verse 12. For our rejoicing is this. What's our next T word? Look at all those T words. The testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity all right the testimony in other words i have a good conscience uh now that's what i've read what this means i have a good conscience as to what i have taught that this is the right way to go anything paul taught was the right way was god's way was god's word he has this testimony of his conscience that he's done the right thing. The testimony. Verse 12. In simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom. Uh, fleshly wisdom would be according to Dr. Us from the 50s. Come on. According to Dr. Who? <clears throat> Dr. Spock. Are there any new doctors out there? Who are, who are other blabbermouths? I don't know what's out there today. Dr. Phil. Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil. I've heard of these names. I've never watched them. Listen, simplicity, godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have our conversation, the way we live in the world, and more abundantly to you, Ward, the teaching that had been taken place. The teaching, simplicity, godly sincerity. Simple, godly sincerity, the teaching. Verses 13 and 14. For we write none other things unto you. <clears throat> Everything he wrote was what? Anything he wrote. Very good. Is that show up in here? But that's the word I want. So what he wrote was what? The truth? And what do we call the truth? That's the, that's the point. The truth. What he wrote was what? The word of God. The scriptures. So everything he wrote was 
the truth. What he wrote is the word of God. So we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust ye have acknowledged that ye shall acknowledge even to the end. The truth. The truth. As also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. In this being able to comfort the church of God and it's done according to the truth. According to the truth. And so when a person receives the truth and they are comforted, then there should be a change. And what do we call that change then? Another T word. If you want to have a change in your life. The transforming or transformation transforming a transformation if we read this whole verse verses 15 and 16 and in the confidence I was minded to come unto you before that ye might have a second benefit not a, not a, a second receiving of the Holy Spirit uh, this second benefit or this gift that this, this thing that is missing from people's lives, the second benefit, and to pass by you into Macedonia and to come again out of Macedonia unto you and of you to be brought on my way towards Judea, that you would have this second uh, benefit. He wants you totally to grow. There's more than just being saved. We get saved and then nothing else happens after that. Folks, there's a lot to this. A lot to this. There's more than just being saved. Right? So there's the transforming, this second benefit that should come unto you by being uh, transforming, by, by obeying the truth, receiving this, t uh, this teaching, the, the working together, the, the trust that has been given that God will get you through this trouble and that we will comfort one another and that ultimately that this tranquility or this peace of God would be in your house. What's the easiest way to have peace in your house? How many people need to live there? One. One. <laughs> You hit it, brother. The moment you have two. There could be. You add a third person to that, a fourth, a fifth. It, it can get complicated, can't it? Just in, in everyday life. You got more than one person, well, you, you're going to have eventually trouble. And this is to end that trouble or give you this second benefit to avoid such trouble. Shake hands before leaving.